Hello friends, my name is Adi. Welcome back to part 2 of my video series on scrapping stock exchange market data using Python, Pandas and Beautiful Soup. In part 1, we covered the essentials to scrap the London Stock Exchange. In this part, my aim is to generalize that code. Generalize, generalization in Python is using classes and packages. So what I have done now is I have just created a empty folder and so that we start fresh. So let's get started now. Okay. I'm going to create a file. Say this is my main class, so I call this lse.py. There is nothing in that. Then I'm going to create a folder to hold our package. So I'm creating a folder now. okay sorry it should be here new folder so let us call this folder as C scrapper S -R. okay within this folder I'm going to add a file um, called init.py that's going to be an empty file uh, that's how in Python the package is created so double underscore init dot py so that is my empty file on the package folder and the package name is uh, scrapper and I'm going to add a class to this so let us call this class web scrap okay scrap web scrap just web scrap okay before we do writing any code let us make sure our package works correct so I am creating a class oh, this needs to be dot py so rename Now let us define a underscore in it. Okay, my tool said number of things I don't want any of this. So in this, let us print plus initialized. I'm just trying to make sure the package and all done created correctly before we start writing our code so I'm going to this this is my main so here I'm going to say web scrap so if you go up you will see it has imported the package our package name is scrapper and we are importing the class web scrap. Let's give it a run. Okay, class initialize. That means our code is working. Then let's do piece by piece. So I copied our 
part one video in the notepad so that we don't have to type much so in this essentially I need only this thing so this is URL so we want to pass this URL to that class so we go here uh, even I don't need this in it PY anymore so we go to web scrap so the here uh, self is a mandatory then I say URL okay now we can pass the URL from our so to make sure it is received correctly let's change this over this code little bit print f so I wanted to print that So first thing first we declare this as an instance variable URL equals URL then here let's print that is enough for now let's run and see what happens okay scrapping blah blah that's cool so we have created a package now and added a class to the package and we are able to successfully call the package in a, in another program that is our lse.py so let us get started where we left off from part one so Ideally, I wish we visit this page. This is the page we scrapped. Okay. Um, what are the limitations in our part one? So in part one, we just scrapped just only one page, whereas the query returned three. 3,399 results and we it is showing only 20 of that in the first page we just scrapped only that page how about getting all of them all the 3 3 so instead of getting just 20 we need to our aim is to get all that 3,399 results to do that in we need to in our scrapping code we need to navigate to the different pages we are now in page one suppose if i click on page two see here we get page two and if you go to page three this is our url bit so the first thing is we need to get this number and divide by this 20 that is our page size to get the number of pages so that is our first task in our class let's do that other code will be will remain same so with a very little modification to our previous code so before going there let us look at the class suppose as I said we want to get this one so let us inspect this as usual what we want this one this is a class we are interested right total results so with the total results is there then inside total results I think there is a span element in the span element this is there so if we yeah see this is the 
so this is what we are trying this bit we need to get so anyway the class name is the way we get the data is there is a span element with a class total results so just we need to grab that to get this 3399 so let's do that now so we are not going to make any change to our main program at this we will go to class so in this I think we don't need this we can copy our initialization code from the previous okay up to up to this we can copy so this is our so here we got so we are opening so we need to get those imports first okay it's happy now so to get the total the this the task is first to get this uh, this div this pan so for that I am going to write some code which uh, I have already written so that so this is the thing let's copy it So from our previous code what happened I am declaring the column head and the data as uh, earlier it was class variable that is not ideal especially when we are going for uh, calling this class multiple times so I converted them as uh, uh, instance variables. so this bit we have done now to check this is working what we can do is we can just call this say let us call this as self dot total results So I have to use again self dot get total results and I don't need to pass anything because uh, the soup object is already an instance variable. So here what's happening is we are selecting the span with class class name total results and the select object the select method of uh, beautiful soup returns a list so first what we are doing is we are checking we got something sometimes suppose if the class name is not there or mistyped or the website has changed the structure then we may not get anything so that's why we check first we found 
and if we found uh, as I said since this is a uh, list so I'm taking the first element of that list and grabbing the text then again replacing the dash uh, space results with uh, just uh, empty string the reason being where inside this this says it is showing this 33399 results I'm just only in the interested in the numeric part so that is what I am replacing that to null so that we can print and see print yeah. could run and see our code now okay we got total results 3399 that matches with our this thing's code so the rest of the code I am going to copy mostly so that uh, we will go method by method so at the end uh, we get everything so the next method get column we have seen already this in part one so there is no change to that this is uh, one of the main method and the next method is our data let's copy that also data is starting from here up to this then we have the cell value that is being passed and then the export to CSV I am copying all of them this already we covered in part one column head gets the list of columns and get data gets the data and finally the, this is a method class method so this is being used to get the extract the cell value and finally this is our <coughs> exporting so now what is more in this as I said here we just grab only one but now uh, one page now we need to iterate through all of the pages to do that let me copy the other bits of code I tried already so total results we covered so let us copy this is the new code I had added. that goes in our init method so we don't need the number of pages now so we don't need to print this <coughs> so page size as I said initially we are going to generalize this page so let us pass this parameter 
as the because when we use the same code on a different site the number of items in the page may differ that 20 that is the page size if you look at this you will see 20 rows that is our page size so that that is being initialized here page size equals the page size then here what we are doing is uh, the task is to find first we got the total results at line 16 okay then we have the page size to get the number of page we are dividing by the page size total re results that is string so we are converting that to int first then divide by page size and I am using sale function that gives them uh, in the last page we may or may not get the all 20 rows we may get less so we need to it may be a fraction maybe 1 10 12 like anything anything comes so that is what we are doing then I am printing just total results and total pages then next what I am doing is we have initialized here column head so So the column head we are constructing. So initially we, the column head is uh, empty list. It's a instance variable. So when we call this column head, instance method, we go and uh, build that columns here in this method. Then we are first we just called straight away only once the get data now we are using a for loop to iterate navigate to all the pages so we start with page 1 okay and uh, I'm printing just uh, then what happens we are formulating a page pattern the page is as you can see so this is and page equals 3 this is a query string so we need to dynamically build that so first we started with 1 then in the URL what I did was we are going to change this URL with this one so I have that somewhere so this is the one but here what happens we are doing page equals one is there that we are changing with the current page the current page is page equals uh, in this case this is going to be one first time so then we are say processing page one then we go to we call the get data get data is the uh, method we build and that address through the table in the page and gets all of the data then what happens we so in this case case first page equals so if we say one so here we are opening the URL again so URL open then again so first time we already open the soup object that is page 1 so then this time since we start from 1 means it will be page 2 now page 3 so I am putting page plus 1 the range object is start plus this one the end object here we we need to go up to this so uh, if we if 
we found say 15 pages it should be 16 because the range objects will iterate through 1 to 15 only so that's how the range object works so then we reset the soup object then we iterate through this and finally when we finish that then we export we export the this thing to the CSV file okay um, let's give it a try so here we need to pass one additional parameter see it is showing intelligence now page size so that is going to be our 20 so I think that's all to hit let us run from here so if we look at this folder now LSC so I'm going to run this as Python lsc.py so we should okay you can see now pages 170 I think I haven't updated the uh, URL that's why it is showing always it's doing again and again the same thing but let's see the pages number of pages uh, calculator We should get 167. Okay, sorry. I it is three three double nine double nine divided by twenty. This is equal to one six nine point nine five. We are rounding it. We are taking the ceiling, so it is one seventy. That is correct and the page it is just doing the same thing uh, that is wrong we know that is wrong so the reason could be I forgot to update this uh, URL I believe yes so if we look at this uh, website it is like this now so if I copy this So everything is same, just all I need to do is I think I need to set this to page equals 1 because in our code what we are doing is we are replacing this page equals 1 with current page. <coughs> current page is going to be page equals 1, page equals 2, page equals 3 like first pages so hope this should resolve our issue let's run and see yes now we are scrapping the pages correctly how long will it take? 170 pages couple of minutes I believe let's wait and see so that we can match
good it is running without any error Okay, that is fine. Three four zero zero. That is one seven zero one seventy, and each zero each row consists of um, times. So twenty, so three four zero zero. That is correct. The first one is first row is our column headings, I believe. Yes. So to prove that we got it correctly. We go to the page if we So this is our last page. So let us see 1 and second page CGGOV sure whether <coughs> our page is so let us check first row 1.5 355 ETFS <coughs> yes that is correct so the last row is MSRG 1.2256 1.22 so that is 21 yes that is correct so what about the second page So the last one should be <coughs> Okay 
okay it seems um, it has scrapped only 169 so this match is 55.40 So if we look at this, yeah, we are in short of uh, <coughs> one page. Okay, let us check the first page. The second page starts where? Second page should be 22. 20 CG1. Okay, I think we the <coughs> page one is started twice. Okay, we could fix this. What we need to do is we need to <coughs> probably sorry start from two because <coughs> the one is already open. So here once again we should say two. Because in the first iteration we are doing the page one that is already for getting the total results we open we use the same instance of that so as we said it will um, So let's give it a try and see now. So CSV file I don't need. So I want to do one more announcement. So here I can say, uh, we let's get the export file also because we are generalizing this code. So here instead of, uh, so when we get that we say, here we say, page size, let me move this up, okay, then we do the self dot what happens uh, in our export file instead of doing this out coding this file name we will say self dot export file so that uh, we can dynamically pass the at the time of creating here we can say this is our erdf dot csv that is what we are doing here. We are scrapping the here, sorry, ETFS. Okay, we will go and change the name to match with this. ETFs. So let's give it a. Sorry, it was my mistake in the range object so it is saying page one we should print page one in the beginning I think so let's see how many pages it passes because outside look already we opened the page
there two third done Okay, we got the file. Now let us go and <coughs> I think this time it is matching. So if we go to this is our last page, this should be zero VR nine one more four twenty eight. Yes, one oh four twenty eight. We got date. Okay, there is some minor fix uh, we need to do, I believe. First of all. So we need to print this. At the outside as well. Okay. And <coughs> as far as let us check the page two. Page two is at twenty-one because it started from zero, that is why we are getting this one so uh, 20 let us check msru 1.65 yes now all seem to be correct <coughs> Okay, finally we made it and um, thanks for your time, hope uh, this helps you in your journey. In part 3, I will cover the enhancing further. Uh, in this tutorial, in this video we did uh, the page navigation. In part 3, I will extend this class to other categories as well so we will have additional parameter and uh, I will show you the automation bit that is most crucial please do subscribe if you enjoyed this video as uh, so that when I whenever I release new video you get the notification